Chapter Three of The Brave. Sonny stepped off the bus and the city smacked him in the face. An explosion of moving bodies and sudden noise. Gusts of diesel fumes, hot grease, sick flesh. He fought panic. When you're going into the woods, Jake always said, first cut a path with your eyes. He tracked a skinny kid with cinnamon skin gliding out of a shadow to block his way. Welcome to the apple, he offered a palm to slap. Sonny glared it away. Right thing, never touch a stranger. You, you people are wise. What tribe you from? Sonny grunted and kept marching across the bus terminal, his ponytail slapping time to the wrap of his boots on the marble floor. The kids skipped alongside in unlaced white sneakers. Sonny looked him over from a corner of his eye. He wore a round brown leather cap on a boxy bush of orange hair. His body was lost inside a free South Africa t-shirt and plaid Bermuda shorts. He carried a walking stick, a thick knotted, highly polished club with a steel tip at the bottom and an ivory snake's head on the top. A black leather bag hung from his shoulder. He barely reached Sonny's chin. He could be 14 years old. Never speak to a soldier or never speak to a stranger who could twist your words. Right thing, no wonder you Native American peoples have survived. Beat it, growled Sonny. He lengthened his stride to lose the little creep. This may be the woods, but I'm not the hunter here. Hey, new face, Sonny whirled into a neon smile. The blonde girl had a sweet look under a mask of bright makeup. He slowed to let her keep up. Don't mind Stick, he thinks he's mayor of the port. Just the welcome wagon doll, he said the kid. How about buying us some breakfast, Mr. Wagon? Doll winked at Sonny. He felt warm and light lightheaded. Was it her or the mention of food? He had, hadn't eaten since before last night's fight. It was nearly four o'clock in the afternoon. Ooh, ee, moaned Stick. You kids are cold. He put a spidery hand on Sonny's left arm. Before Sonny could shake it off, Doll was hanging on his right sleeve. They steered him through the bus station crowd like expert canoe paddlers avoiding the rocks and the rapids. Around lurching beggars, howling kids, sweating tourists, Stick used his snake's head club to poke people out of their way. Sonny was standing between Stick and Doll at a high table outside a donut shop before he figured out how he had gotten there. <coughs> the blueberry, my man, is numero uno, said Stick. He snapped his fingers at Doll and let's have some tall and chilly OJ for the liquids and vitamins necessary in this hellacious weather. He watched Doll hurry off to the counter. The teen queen likes you. She's usually real shy with strangers. Sonny slipped off the deerskin pack and dropped it between his feet. He squeezed it with his boot heels. Nobody's going to snatch this and run. Just how dumb you think I am, weasel. He touched the fat wallet in the back pocket of his jeans. Call mom again in a few minutes. He had tried the number every time the bus made a rest stop. If there's no answer, this time I'll just go to Soho, wherever that is. Might as well get some free food first. Hear what the, these hustlers have to say. First time in New York? Nah. He remembered the other times only from the pictures in his pack. His father in uniform just before he went to Vietnam, holding him in front of a fancy toy store on Fifth Avenue with his mother's Mohawk cousins in their high steel hard hats and posing in front of her jewelry stall at a Brooklyn crafts fair. His little arms hung with necklaces and bracelets. NYC, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere, said Stick, waving his club at the crowd surging back and forth across the terminal floor. And you, my man, could make it here. What do you mean? It came out tougher than he had meant it to sound, too tough as if he was afraid of Stick. Stick smiled. Up close, he looked much older than Sonny had first thought, at least 18. Right thing, I knew you were no fool. You could be chief. 
of what? A street. This time his wave included the shapes and colors swirling outside the bus station's windows. What are you talking about? He tried not to sound too interested. Big, strong, you got a different look. People gonna want a piece of you. Right thing, long as you get yours. Here we go. Doll slid a tray onto the table and served them each a blueberry muffin on a napkin and orange juice in a paper cup. She had bought herself a glazed donut, chocolate donut and a container of coffee. I can use you myself, said Stick. Need a bang bang. That's a security guy, said Doll. She touched his headband. That's so fresh. What's your name? Sonny. She offered her hand warm and damp. Doll's my street name. It's really Heather. You believe that? She giggled. Under the powder was a constellation of freckles on her cheeks and nose. She's really younger and softer than she looks, Sonny thought. You got a place to stay? Yeah. With some luck, I'll be in a barracks soon, he thought. You could own the deuce, said Stick. That's 42nd Street, said Doll. The deuce? The dofer, said Stick. Crossroads of the world, the street where the elite meet to beat, cheat, and greet sweet meat. You can be free on the street, said Doll. Do what you th want. Right thing, said Stick. Nobody on your case, 24-7, 365. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, said Doll. Chief Sonny knew that, said Stick. You talk the talk. Sonny nodded and Doll smiled. Her leg brushed against his under the table. He wondered if it was an accident. She ate very carefully, daintily, little nips off the donut, small silent sips of coffee. She blotted a crumb from a corner of her full red lips with a dab of her napkin. She leaned forward and her blouse opened. He could see her soft, freckly, milky white chest. He wondered how much of the throbbing between his legs was from Hoffer and how much for Doll. Better do what I came to do before I forget what it was. Got to make a phone call. Be my guest, said Stick. He reached into his black leather bag and pulled out a cellular phone. Hope you're not calling friends in Tokyo. Soho, said Sonny. He fished the card with his mom's address and phone number out of his wallet. Stick flicked a switch and held the phone between Sonny, tapped out the number. There was a busy signal. Stick pressed a button. Memory, it keep, it'll keep dialing till it gets through. And Doll said, Soho's hot. Art galleries and great clothes. Stick, I told you he was an artist, aren't you? Something in her voice made him want to say yes. Well, sort of, not really. See, she turned her back to Sunny, her brown eyes bright. They were small eyes, quick pecking bird's eyes. I spotted you first. True story, said Stick. The phone clicked seven times and growled a busy signal. He set it on the table. Communications lifeblood of the modern era. Dope dealer, thought Sunny, probably tried to sell me some. Love art, said Doll. Believe I used to do clay. She wiggled her fingers, tipped with black paste on nails decorated with little stars. A scarecrow shambled up, shaking a dirty paper cup. Change? Doll wrinkled her nose at the smell and stick snapped. Space? The beggar started to speak, took a closer look at the ivory snake head and shuffled off. Sonny was surprised by the hard mask that had slipped over Stick's face. The port can get weird, said Stick. You need friends, extra eyes. This is a jungle of slime balls and bone suckers. Can't trust anybody in the port or on the deuce, especially the pig posse. The cops, explained Doll. They think they can do anything because they got the tin. Badge, said Doll. There is this one pig boss who has dedicated his whole life to busting me, said Stick. He tapped his forehead. This is one deranged dude. Sergeant Alfred Brooks, Doll shook her head. 
I'll point him out sometime. Got to watch out for him. Maybe he's got to watch out for me, said Stick. Maybe later, said Doll. She blinked hard and made a small gesture with her chin. Right thing, said Stick. To be continued, Chief Sonny. He slipped the phone back into the bag. Bring him by tonight, Doll. Sonny sensed movement around them. Big men, black and white, shoving people out of their way. Stick scooted into the crowd, hunched over his bat phone bag, clearing a path with the snake head. He disappeared. You'll be okay, Sonny, said Doll. Just be cool, whatever happens. The monster flooded, fluttered as the men surrounded the table, half a dozen of them in jeans and work shirts. He thought of the big mouth bozos at the smoker. One of them said, where'd he go, Dolly? He was late for church, she said sweetly. Real funny, take her. Doll stepped away from the table. and One of the men reached out for her. Sonny slapped his arm away. Stay out of this, Tonto. Another arm reached for Doll. Sonny chopped it down and shoved the man back with a forearm to his chest. Sonny blocked the way as Doll slipped into the crowd. Okay, young gentleman, that's enough. It's over. Hands on his shoulders, he glimpsed a dark face behind him. Sonny pivoted and nailed it with a left, a short, crisp hook to the side of a bearded black chin. As the man crumbled, Sonny saw the badge hanging on a chain around his neck, a cop. Club slammed against his legs and shoulders. One crashed against the back of his head. He, had, he went down under a swarm of bodies. It was like football. Yeah, just like football. Jake, nobody walks over me. Sure. Take it till your time comes. Time out. End of chapter three.